Hello, Slosh. Awesome to be here today. I'm here to demo Arca, your helping hand in navigating the content landscape. So you can consider Arca as internet scale librarians in your pocket. So if you have a context, you just give it to your librarian, and they do the work on your behalf. So if you think about it, probably you've seen already emerging uh, new alternatives in the market, like answer engines. Uh, so you go there with a question, and they give you a quick answer. So it's an alternative to search. However, we don't always have a question in mind. We spend majority of our time in discoveries. So in Arca, we're reimagining the internet experience. How about we have our own discoveries with our own set of rules? Why does this matter? So in this slide, you can see how overwhelming the current landscape is. Over 62% of content consumers are overwhelmed to navigate the current landscape. 75% feel like there's a lot of misinformation out there, and they're seeking for better solutions so that they can stay productive. And to be honest, there's really no signs of slowing down. So information overload is something that we could already foresee in the early 2000s. Um, if you think about it, there was a rise of new websites, and we got alternatives like RSS feeds, aggregators. However, they lacked personalization and intelligent filtering. Then we got manual creation tools like Pocket, if you've heard about it. But however, with Pocket, it's a really nice way to sort of, if you find things in the internet, you can collect them. However, it does not solve our problem of navigating the cluttered nature of the internet. Well, uh, there's no really signs of slowing down. With generative AI easing content creation, the uh, amount of content that we'll have in the internet will be 3x the current pace. So the problem will be much, much worse in the upcoming years. So in Arca, we gathered as a team last fall to reimagine what would an internet experience look like, one that connects us to content that informs, empowers, and inspires. We actually started creating the product for ourselves, but we realized that this is such a big problem for hundreds of millions of internet users. So we built the first version of Arca, and we launched it this fall, which has been crazy. And the first thing we built was that every, inter every user in Arca can build uh, their own portals. I will show you how, how it happens. And the librarians go to work. So you set an area of interest that you have to keep up with, maybe for your work or your studies. And you have your daily summaries set. So every morning, you go to in, into your portal, and you get your daily summaries. Our users said that their day actually starts in Arca. And now we're taking a leap forward. Let me show you how. So here, you see the example portals. And I'm now creating a digital landscape named uh, portal, so a team that I'm interested in. And I have my engine uh, on. So instead of prompting, you add a recent thing that you found interesting. It can be a text, podcast, article, video. And the librarian analyzes it and creates a focus area. Two of our key principles is transparency and control. So you can easily tweak your area of focus, and then you're all set. And that's how it works. One thing that we learned, actually, is that humans are really bad at prompting. We're really bad at narrating what we actually are seeking to look at, but we do know our areas of interest. So for us, one of the hardest things was to reimagine how do people set up their uh, portals. And this has been a brilliant way. Actually, our beta users, many haven't even touched the area of focus. So it has been quite uh, on point, and some have tweaked it a little bit. Another thing it does when you add a text or a video link and it analyzes and sets your uh, area of focus is that the librarian also is thinking of, OK, what Mona is interested at, but also what are things that um, it needs to understand more about you so that it can really create a portal that curates insights that are relevant for you. Once you're set, this is your portal, and you access your daily discoveries from here. So here you see various of things the librarian has curated for you. Some are grouped, uh, and some are um, recent things that are happening in the internet landscape. So you can uh, consume the insights directly in the format of summaries. And you can watch, for instance, the YouTube video directly in Arca. But if something actually sparked when you looked at the video, you can just narrate a follow-up. And the librarian, again, goes to work. So here, it 
captures your follow-up and it starts to look at across the internet, across platforms, to find your interesting things to dive deeper into. So again, you can consider your librarian as your helping hand. You don't have to ask a question. You can just go to your portal on a day-to-day, -day, see what are the interesting curation it has curated for you. And if you have some things as a follow-up that you want to ask, you can go and ask. So OK, what has been super interesting about building Arca, uh, there's a special language that our team speaks. It's called TikTok. So we have been growing a lot there. Uh, we released our first 1,000 users from our wait list, from our very growing wait list. And they have created over 2,600 portals within the last month. And they have curated over 11,000 pieces of content. And these portals are portals that they actually share with their team members, uh, with, uh, with their friends. Um, so less than 20% of the portals in Arca has been kept private, which is also just has been surprising for our team when we have been building Arca. Very interesting different portals. Like one of my favorite curators that I follow in Arca, I didn't even know, know, know him, so we let him in from our wait list, but he's called Jason. He has this portal called Theory of Web which has been quite interesting. So we daily go to Arc and see what type of portals our current beta, beta customers are creating. Another thing that has been quite interesting is that when you start building, you have a vision, right? But when you launch the product for the first users, you learn more. Uh, our target group, or the people that have been using Arca, are mainly young professionals. So they're similar to us. Um, they are digital native. They were born social, and they're seeking for better ways to navigate the content landscape. So for them, digital cleanse doesn't really work. Um, so the feedback that we have gotten from them is that this fits perfectly into their workflow. So within the day, if something comes to mind, they just go to Arca um, and see what discoveries there, there, are, there is there. Uh, the, uh, some, of, some of our users come from different companies, so such as My, uh, Miro, Google, Nike, designers, tech people, media, marketers, so all around. Um, and of course, also information interests. So people that have big communities online use Arca to better uh, get, uh, get content in a better, more manageable way. Our vision is quite simple. We imagine a better internet experience, and we know that the next decade will be built today. So for us, we really want to make the internet feel like ours again. Why Helsinki? So we are, we are from here. Uh, I don't know if you know, but this is a fun fact. The very first web browser with a graphical user interface was built in this very country. It was built by our university alumni before Netscape and Mosaic. So we have history with the early internet. And for us, how we imagine the internet landscape is that it needs new kinds of thinkers. If you have a smartphone in your hands, you probably have felt that it's, it's not like it used to be. And I think it is a reflection of the founders and the type of uh, founders that are building these platforms. So for us, it was important that we build a product that has Nordic values, that help us stay productive, and help us to navigate content in a more enjoyable way. So we are not a secretive company. Um, so we are quite on stealth, and we let people in. Um, but yeah, we do get also angry emails and DMs. I think one of the funniest one was that one sent us a comment that if we don't let them in, they will create a competitor called Arca with a K. So it's time to let people in. However, for us, it's important that we build publicly. So if you wanna, if you want to build the next decade internet experience, maybe you're building it already, or you want to build it uh, with a very low threshold, you can contact us, and I'm happy happy to answer and be a helping, helping hand. Thank you so much.